So my name is Dr. Danny Leonard. I'm a pediatrician practicing in Hastings, Nebraska and Grand Island, Nebraska. I'm also staff physician at Children's uh, Hospital and Medical Center in Omaha. And I got involved in COVID research in July of 2020. I was actually approached with another group of doctors to perform COVID vaccine research on children starting at ages 12 and over, and then subsequently at younger ages, ages five to 11, ages two to four, and most recently this week, ages six months to two years, so that we can get everybody in the country vaccinated, everybody in the world vaccinated, so we can get out of this pandemic as safely as possible. So I often get asked how the COVID vaccine works in kids and does it work the same way in children as it does for adults? The answer to that is yes. We use the same factors, the same process, the same hope that a child's immune system can mount an exceptionally strong reaction to the vaccine in an effort to prevent disease, just the way we've shown that it does very effectively and exceptionally safely in the adult population. The studies are showing that kids are mirroring this. In fact, kids are having exceptional antibody responses and are tolerating the vaccine better than most adults did. This is awesome news, it's very promising, and it really gives us hope for the future of getting out of this. So the question addressing dosing on the vaccine, we have looked into dose reducing the concentration of the vaccine depending on the age of the child being vaccinated. Those studies are being wrapped up, those studies have been done. It is still a two-shot series for most of the vaccines and certainly the vaccines that are going to be available soonest in the way of the Pfizer vaccine and shortly thereafter the Moderna vaccine. Those will be two-shot series for children under the age of 17, just like it was for an adult if you received either of those products. It would be the same exact regimen. We've dose reduced it depending on the age of the kid at a lower concentration of fewer micrograms of active vaccine in order to elicit the same or better antibody responses in the children group. Uh, kids have an incredible innate immunity. They're able to recognize things that are different from themselves and clear infections in a more rapid way than adults do. Because their immune system is so dialed up, they're able to recognize, latch on, and be more productive in their immune systems with lower concentration of vaccine. Ergo, lower concentration, you'll probably have fewer side effects, but still mount just as good or a better immune response than our adult colleagues. So. In medicine, the least amount of medicine you can get away with is the better medicine. The same goes for vaccines. Use the lowest concentration you can to elicit the best response you can. We found that through multiple dosing regimes, through multiple age groups. So we have a, an incentive and we have a desire to give as little as we can and get maximal effect. And we've done that. We've done the homework and it's working. So I often get asked, what is my kid going to feel? How are they going to experience the vaccine? Will they feel down? The reality is when you have a functional immune system and it's going to do its job of protecting you, you gotta, you gotta sweat a little, you gotta bleed a little. And so you're going to be sore, you're going to have a sore arm, you might get headachey, you might get feverish. That storm will pass, you'll be fine typically within a day or two. You will feel inconvenienced. By and large, doing the studies, I have not seen as many complaints coming from the kids uh, compared to the adult cohorts that got their vaccines, myself included. So you should anticipate, you should allow these things to happen, you should not be bothered by them, they're very anticipated, but they're not occurring with such frequency that I thought they would. Um, and like I said, kids are having really great antibody responses. So. I wouldn't fear an inconvenience afternoon or evening after a COVID shot in a kid. Um, it's certainly allowable, it's expected, it's not a problem, but um, it's not occurring at such frequency that we saw in adults. So when we talk about safety of these vaccines and safety of any medical intervention or any prescription you're given, Safety is our number one concern. It's our number one priority. Second to that is how effective this is. But we don't care if something's effective if it's rendered unsafe or it's determined to have risks that outweigh the benefit. That's not what we want in medicine. That's innately against what we're trying to accomplish. Being in the research, conducting the research, seeing kids with COVID, trying to prevent other kids from getting COVID, I can speak 
with skin in the game that this is exceptionally safe. And the studies that I'm responsible for and colleagues of mine across the country are proving that to the public, we're proving that to ourselves, we're proving that to each other. It is exceptionally safe and thank God it's becoming exceptionally effective at preventing disease in children. I always tell parents, you know, my decisions that I make, every doctor's decision that they make for your child on your behalf is meant to reduce risk and maximize benefit, whether it's through this vaccine or through prescription for an antibiotic, for pneumonia or an ear infection. Many people can't pronounce the things we prescribe for your children to take, but you trust us because you know that we will make your child better. That is the same with the vaccine. I need you to trust us. We're doing the homework. We've got skin in the game. It is exceptionally safe. If you trust us with everything that you have and everything you intend to moving forward, just put the vaccine on that checklist. It's going to work. As far as this mRNA vaccine and people's perception that it was rushed or that it came to be uh, in a light speed way as though corners were cut or um, there was a laxity in the process could not be further from the truth. Being a participant, being in charge of a research study, uh, we go through painstaking triple checks, quadruple checks to make sure that corners are not being cut. This methodology, this technology, this mRNA platform is not new to science. It's not new to the medical community. Um, for years, 2015 moving forward, this mRNA platform became very promising to companies like Pfizer and like Moderna. To many people's uh, unknowing, there were several mRNA-based vaccines that were intended to come to market and already in clinical trials for things like herpes, CMV, influenza, Zika virus, things that we all know the names of, but they were already in the works of using mRNA vaccines uh, to, pre to prevent those diseases. We are lucky that that platform existed because it's fewer ingredients, it's a shorter timeline, it's a very elegant process, it's, it's quick, it's clean. And so applying that model to a COVID vaccine was just ingenuity. It was luck that we have already developed that platform and had the technology in very few companies who could turn this thing out and prove to you and prove to me as a physician that this was going to work. And more importantly, it was going to work in a sustainable way. It wasn't going to be just for some people. It was going to be readily available for everyone. I would venture to say, and I'd be very surprised if in the next five to 10 years, we don't start seeing more routine child vaccines adopt that mRNA platform. Because like I said, it's elegant, it's sophisticated, it's proving itself to be very safe. Um, and the timeline to get diseases prevented and treated has we've proven to ourselves we can do this in a meaningful safe way using this new technology um you know out of you know necessity comes invention and we're all watching that we're all living that so what are the cells what are the good points to the vaccine well it's risk reduction we want people to get away from the fallacy that we're going to risk eliminate. You cannot risk eliminate anything for yourself or for your child in the world, but you can risk reduce. And when we show that vaccination risk reduces your chances of either dying from COVID, being hospitalized from COVID, or even being knocked on your butt for more than a week with COVID, it goes down 80, 85, 90%. That is exceptional. In public health, in medicine, when we roll out a vaccine for any communicable disease, we are thrilled to get north of 80% protection. I've got news for you. There is no vaccine that you or your child has received up to this point that can boast 100% efficacy in preventing disease. But when enough of us do this, and we reduce the public likelihood of a population continuing to propagate a disease, and we stamp out those flames together, the compiled risk reduction of all of us becomes stronger. You don't put out most of a house fire. You don't leave a pile of smoldering ashes in hopes the house doesn't catch fire again. That is the mentality you need for widespread vaccination. This has occurred effectively before. Polio is something you read about in your history books unless you go to medical school. 
I hope to never see polio in my life. I probably won't because our grandparents did a phenomenal job getting themselves and their kids vaccinated. That's where we are at with COVID vaccine. You can have a breakthrough infection even after you get vaccinated. It is exceptionally unlikely, like less than a percent unlikely. If you do, you need to do the social things that you learned to do last year. You need to stay away from people. You need to mask. You need to isolate. Because if we, once again, if we all help continue putting out the fire, it will go out eventually. We're seeing long-term, and by long-term, I mean year, maybe year and a half protection so far for uh, antibody um, protection against COVID vaccines. I myself am part of a study um, after having a third booster and I continue to have my antibody levels checked so we can tell people this is how long we expect these COVID vaccines to last. We are hoping and do not suspect it will be a yearly shot like many of us do for the flu. It is unlikely that's going to be necessary. We can get there if we all do our part and get vaccinated and stamp out those smoldering ashes faster. As far as masking, if you're vaccinated or if you're not, <clears throat> we don't want laxity in people who are fully vaccinated, thank you all, in not wearing a mask in public for a couple of reasons. There are some people who won't mount an immune response that we're hoping with the COVID vaccine for various reasons, um, immuno immunogenicity problems, um, chronic diseases of other kind, or they might get a breakthrough infection and then go spread it to someone who hasn't been vaccinated or someone whose immunity has been rendered um, ineffective because they acquired cancer later and are getting chemotherapy. So um, we need to be all in this. This is all for one and one for all. Um, and so masking when you're fully vaccinated is setting a good example. It's risk reducing more than you more than you are without masking, knowing that you can't risk eliminating. It, but it's doing the best you can. And if you're not doing the best you can, then what you're doing is mediocre. And that is what's gonna keep this thing lasting. I address a lot of parents who have anxiety about the COVID vaccine in their child and the newness of it all and the ownership they take with feeling responsible for keeping their child healthy. And that is your responsibility. And in everything I've said about risk reduction and working together with your provider, whether it's your pediatrician, your family doctor, a family friend, I want you to base base your thoughts base your decisions on facts not feelings we are responsible for the care of your child no one who is sworn to the care of a child would ever knowingly or unknowingly place them in harm's way we have gone through very long nights grueling months to prove to ourselves that this is the right thing to do for your children and i feel very passionately that that is the case and being on the front lines doing the COVID research myself being responsible for kids from all over the country they literally come to hastings nebraska from innumerable states driving overnight hours and hours to come be part of the trial because they have access to it here and so to inspire that sort of participation and caring for yourselves and caring for your neighbors is is that's the recipe for success that is the best medicine and if so i can walk you through that and walk you through the point of getting vaccinated and promise you a better future in a safe immediate future on that decision we're going to end up in a great place so i i beg you i ask you from someone who does the research all the way to someone who takes care of your sick kid in the icu which don't always have good outcomes this is what we need to do. This is what I hope you will do. I will be available in any way I'm needed to be to answer questions or calm anxieties so that we can get out of this. And I think we can.